Today, I have uh, very strong feelings. Today, I feel Arab. Today, I feel African. Today, I feel uh, gay. And uh, I feel this because I know what it means to be discriminated. As a child, I had uh, red hair and I had these red, how do you call them? Freckles. 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 Sorry? Freckles. Freckles. You see, I don't even know the term. Who is actually caring about the workers? Nobody cares. Oh, hello. Welcome to System Fail, the show where radicalization is a two-way street. A New York City heiress says she was brainwashed by her elite liberal college, and her mother had to pay over $300 a day to deprogram her. I say brainwashing, and I don't say it lightly because I really do feel that my thoughts weren't my own. I became completely brainwashed into believing that I was oppressed by our toxic patriarchal society. You know that this country is racist. It's a woke indoctrination. I had to unlearn my four years of wokeism. Feminist just means wanting equal rights. Fight the enemy within. Fight the bourgeois condition. Just because I may present more fed the doesn't mean that I'm any less than them. Kill the pig. Kill the pig. How did you get better? by watching five-minute PragerU videos online for free. She's now the development director for PragerU. <laughs> Amazing. And if you want to save the $300 a day to deprogram someone from being woke, watch Fox. I am your host, DDoS. And for three years now, humans have been struggling with the microbial, social, and geopolitical fallout of the SARS-2 coronavirus, commonly known as COVID-19. Keep your distance and wear a mask. Dead bodies being wheeled in procession from a hospital in Brooklyn. More than 50 million positive cases worldwide. More testing is needed. Many countries are scrambling to buy the exact same chemicals. We're all in this together. As longtime viewers may remember, I myself was promoted to submedia news anchor back in 2020 to spare my comrade bosses from having to share one another's oxygen. <coughs> <coughs> While the origin of COVID-19 remains a matter of vigorous debate. Obviously, we know it's a coronavirus. We know that it's a strain that partly came from a bat. You've been brainwashed. I think this was all planned by the Democratic Party. The first confirmed case was recorded on November 17, 2019, in a 55-year-old medical patient from China's Hubei province. Since then, the pandemic has killed more than 18 million humans devastated national healthcare systems, disrupted manufacturing and global supply chains, and ravaged the international economy. It has also radically transformed everyday life, worsened a pre-existing mental health crisis, and served as a lightning rod for political divisions in the so-called culture war. You mask your child, you're a child abuser. They're trying to rape our children with this poison. Any opportunity that humans once had to eradicate the virus was dashed by politicians' early decision to prioritize pharmaceutical corporations' intellectual property rights over universal access to vaccines. And as the scientific consensus has hardened around this reality, a new normal has slowly set in. Just giving up. This is all of us right now. Nothing matters. Since the onset of the Omicron variant last winter, deaths and serious hospitalizations have fallen sharply in many parts of the world, even as overall rates of infection have remained high. Seniors, humans with compromised immune systems, and those with long COVID symptoms, have been further marginalized by a public eager to move beyond mask mandates, school closures, and quarantine measures. It's believed that COVID-19 will leave behind a devastating legacy in the years to come. In the strongholds of Western individualism, politicians and public health officials have stopped tracking daily infections and have given up on even basic containment measures. The pandemic is over. The situation is quite different in China, where authorities continue to enforce the strictest public health measures in the world. 
Millions under strict and prolonged lockdown. Police in hazmat suits clash with residents. People testing positive still face quarantine or hospital. <laughs> Once the subject of glowing praise from world health officials and Western leftists with Deng Xiaoping profile pictures. The Chinese Communist Party is not trying to eliminate the Uyghur ethnic minority, who are all extremely happy all the time. China's so-called zero-COVID policy is now buckling under the strain of a more highly transmissible Omicron variant. Low-quality vaccines and a much lower case count has left the Chinese population with far fewer antibodies than their international counterparts. This has forced the state to double down on its strict containment regime of mass testing, contact tracing, travel restrictions, and draconian lockdowns of apartment blocks, neighborhoods, cities, and entire regions. Schools and factories and lockdown areas have implemented strict quarantine measures requiring students and workers to live on site, isolated from their peers, and unable to go outside, sometimes for months on end. Those who test positive are held in makeshift quarantine facilities. Complaints of food and medicine shortages have been rampant, leading to hundreds of isolated protests and small-scale riots. In recent weeks, pent-up anger over the situation has exploded into the largest wave of protests that the country has seen in decades. <laughs> Back in October, after rumors of an outbreak began to spread, tens of thousands of workers staged dramatic escapes from the Foxconn factory in Zhengzhou, a sprawling industrial complex that employs more than 200,000 workers and produces more than 70% of the global supply of iPhones. In November, the company began offering large bonuses to fill these vacancies. But the new hires, mostly poor migrant laborers, were soon informed that these bonuses would be delayed. On the evening of November 22, these enraged workers took over the complex, pushing out local party officials and security personnel. Over the next 24 hours, they defended the occupied factory from lines of police in white hazmat suits, producing some of the most surreal riot porn in recent memory. On day three, the insurgent workers were offered more than three months' salary to stop protesting and leave the factory. Their short-lived revolt is estimated to have caused a global shortage of 6 million iPhone 14 Pros, in the lead-up to Christmas, wiping billions of dollars off Apple's stock price. On November 24, an electrical fire broke out in a high-rise. Located in a predominantly weaker neighborhood in Urumqi, the capital of Xinjiang province. At least 10 people were killed. Following a botched attempt to fight the blaze, it emerged that many residents had been unable to flee the building, as their doors had been chained shut to enforce a lockdown, in place since August 10. Public outrage spread quickly. The next day, Urumqi was engulfed in protests. In Shanghai, a large vigil transformed into clashes with police. Over the next several days, demonstrations broke out across most major cities, including Beijing, Wuhan, Hangzhou, Chengdu, Jinan, Nanjing, Lanzhou, and Xi'an. Meanwhile, riots erupted in Guangzhou and Chongqing, with residents taking to the streets en masse to defy local lockdowns and fight cops. The protests spread to at least 79 universities, with students in Beijing demanding an end to zero COVID and state censorship, and pushing back against claims that the protests were being controlled by foreign agents. <laughs> 
Initially caught off guard by the protests, the Chinese Communist Party moved quickly to reassert control, announcing a crackdown on dissent and a new targeted vaccination program for seniors, which some see as a first step towards loosening the zero-COVID policy. Whether this will be enough to ease tensions remains to be seen. Given the widespread display of anger and frustration at the uh, zero COVID policy in recent days, is China thinking about ending it? And in other news, the tech world continues to reel from Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter. The world's richest man has been showing us how he'll run one of the world's biggest social media platforms. He seems to be largely making this up as it goes along. It's absolute chaos. Twitter is, was, and will always be a dumpster fire. It's my fault, 100%. Since assuming control of the social media giant, the world's richest man has laid off more than half its staff, upended its user verification and content moderation policies, and reinstated a number of banned accounts. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Well players, that didn't last long. As part of his ongoing crusade against woke culture, Musk has also suspended a number of American anti-fascist and anarchist accounts, including the Elm Fork, John Brown Gun Club, and the well-known anarchist publisher, Crime Think. Incredibly, Musk has been guided in this purge by right-wing hack and make-believe journalist Andy No. I've been trying to raise attention to those who are higher up in, at Twitter that that platform is the primary platform that are used by far-left violent extremists to organize, promote violence, and then to raise funds for criminal suspects. As Twitter continues its inevitable slide into a virtual hellscape of obnoxious red-pilled trolls, and sanctimonious snitches. A notable silver lining has been the migration of many anarchists, anti-fascists, and anti-colonial militants to decentralized, open-source, and federated alternatives like Mastodon. Oh yeah, stay off Twitter. I did not expect that. Hmm. We have now reached the end of this episode of System Fail. Much like other Mastodon servers, Collectiva.social has seen a massive spike in new accounts in the past month. If you'd like to support independent anarchist media infrastructure, consider making a donation at collectiva.info slash donate. You can support Submedia by buying some gear, making a one-time donation, or signing up to be a monthly sustainer on our website, sub.media. A huge thank you to our latest sustainers, Karen, Teresa, Dominic, Daniel, and Derek. Be sure to follow us on your favorite corporate data mining platform of choice, or on federated social media platforms like Mastodon or PeerTube, by searching for Submedia. Or better yet, sign up to our mailing list to get each new episode delivered directly to your inbox. Godspeed, humans. Mm -hmm.